maybe to kick off, I would like to ask you, Dai, how, yeah. how do you start uh, working with Japanese instruments and Japanese well, solos on those well, instruments? Well, well, this is the interesting, well, I don't know, interesting for me, is the uh, interesting part for me, uh, in my view, is that because... I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? I mean, I was born in Japan, but I left Japan to uh, to UK. Um, I moved when I was 15 uh, years old on my own. So I was living and being educated in Japan until 15 years old. But uh, this is the strangest things in that country, if I may say so, that, I mean, I never met anybody. I never met anybody when I was growing up, um, somebody who said, I went, to, yes, what did you do last week? And no, I, we went to see a Shakuhachi concert or Shamisen concert or, or any kind of Japanese traditional instruments concert. Um, certainly I have never seen Japanese instruments uh, live or heard live um, or even on, on a CD. Um, as in, let's listen to it, um, except uh, maybe I don't know, this music is always uh, playing in uh, like 1st of January, New Year thing on TV, maybe, or uh, in a restaurant, um, I don't know, that, that sort of thing. I have no idea. I mean, I've never been in touch with any of Japanese instruments. I mean, not even one, uh, even though I was um, studying piano, composing, um, all of that stuff um, since when I was five. And... Um, yeah, and then this is, I was born in 1977, so this is, we're talking that uh, learning music instruments, Western classical music instrumental learning in Japan in 1980s. I mean, you're talking about like a very strict Japanese style piano teacher with a mother jotting down all the little her notebook and all that, like... It's not at all like uh, today, I think, in a way, I think. I mean, very intense music learning, but I never ever be in touch with uh, Japanese traditional uh, music, music, music culture, which is, I think is, is I think it's a big problem. And um, I only got in, the uh, first time I've ever seen the Japanese instruments was in Darmstadt in 2000 or 2001 or something like that. That was the first time I ever seen or heard Japanese instruments together with other uh, guests in, in, in that German town. And uh, that was very strange, uh, very interesting, very strange. But even though, even though then there was no shakuhachi as far as I remember. So I, I really had no um, contact with the Japanese instruments. Then um, when I was like uh, in my 20s, Time I have I was asked to write music uh, which in, includes koto and sho. Uh, koto and sho they're both Japanese instruments, but those were played by British musicians, and then they taught me what these instruments, how these instruments work, and then they were very very nice and very informative, and especially the sho player. I mean, in a way, he was like a historian, so he really taught me a lot. Uh, not, 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 I'm sure he can tell me more, but it was enough for me to start learning uh, in, um, learn about instruments, then write. And then even they, even then this piece called Okeanos Breeze, uh, Cotton Show, and then three other Western instruments, though this piece still has not been performed in Japan, even though this has been performed uh, pretty much everywhere in America, in Europe, uh, England, definitely, many, many times, but not in Japan. So um, I've not, yeah, uh, meanwhile, I was getting older and uh, getting some concerts here and there, um, including in Japan, but nobody from Japanese traditional instrumental world uh, would ever contact me or there's no meeting whatsoever until the time that, um, apart from the Okinawa's Breeze, and, and I was keep writing, this is a funny story I'll tell you in a minute, but the, because of the Okeanos Breeze, that this British ensemble, Okeanos, uh, ensemble Okeanos, they were really great and they were performing this piece lot of, lots and lots of times. And I decided adding uh, movements, um, like duo between koto and uh, viola, mm -hmm. but the viola never used the bow. Viola only uses guitar pick, just guitar pick and then koto, because, it's, because I mean, I, I have a really big issue uh, in, uh, 
especially in a um, classical music that are plat or percuss percussion or keyboard instruments, the materials, musical materials are shared with a sustaining instrument. I know it's weird. I mean, everyone does it, Beethoven does it, Schumann does it, but I have a problem. It's obviously it's my problem. Um, but anyway, so therefore I didn't, I just couldn't write for koto, which is plucked instruments in a way, and then viola playing the bow. I, mean, I just couldn't. So I was writing piece for uh, guitar pick, um, well, viola with a guitar pick and the koto. And funny enough, this month, in fact, it's uh, next week, I think, that, um, yeah, this piece will be performed again in Japan, but viola part um, will be performed on shamisen. And I didn't realize until, I didn't realize 15 years ago, I think 15 years ago, yeah, 15 years ago, I was writing shamisen music without knowing what shamisen is, mm -hmm. but for viola. So obviously, instead of a guitar pick, the shamisen is like a 20 times bigger plectrum. It's, 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 you know, it's supposed to play like that. So, but I didn't know that. So it was surprising that when we, when we, make, when we made the shamisen version, it, there was almost no change. There's no change needed. And uh, so that was very strange. Um, maybe I'm more Japanese than I may think I am myself. But anyway, so then those are the things. And until the, I think, I don't know when it was, was it 2014? I don't, I don't know. Um, the young, well, young Gish, I guess, <laughs> shamisen player, Hidejiro Honjo came to me, well, contacted uh, me, um, yeah, my, my agent, and uh, if he could, if um, he want me to write music for shamisen. And I was talking to, even my agent was saying shamisen, you mean that shamisen like that, that one? It's like, I don't know, is it? I, I have no idea. And. Uh, and we really, we don't know him. So, okay. I mean, because I, I'm very, um, how can I say? Um, I like very much the, the kind of challenge. I, I don't have, I don't, to, to be honest, I don't really have things like I will not write for that instrument or that kind of things. Any challenge would be great um, because composing is very much like, um, I feel like, uh, well, since I'm, I was, I'm composing since when I, when I was very little. So I feel like I'm, I'm in a little boy in a toy shop all the time. I can imagine the instrument I don't know. That's like the, the new toy you, you never met, you've never seen. So it's like the best things ever. So what is that? What is shamisen? Let's say. So then, um, and then I realized that maybe you too like this, but I then since then I have met many, many Japanese instrumentalists, uh, traditional instrumentalists. They are, I must say, they are very, very good at teaching the instruments to, to people. They are very good teacher, very good at their educating people, what people like me who would love to know more. And then, uh, and then uh, back to your question that it is either Japanese instruments or any instruments, in, in fact, that I, when I compose music that I am, um, how can I say, that I spend hours and hours um, on Skype or Zoom like this with the musician to collaborate so heavily. And I, I mean, I don't know, everybody's nice about it, but I'm sure that uh, it's at some time, maybe it's a nightmare for the musicians, I can imagine, because you will be seeing my bar one until the last bar, uh, including the sections I have composed and you kindly played it for me and I didn't like it and I cut on things like this. So um, when I'm composing music that uh, the musicians will be informed way more than you would want to be. <laughs> so I always ask a musician to play it for me. And then, I mean, I notate them to say, can you play it? Well, even sight reading, whatever. And so immediately I can see the awkwardness maybe, but is it good awkwardness or is it something I should do? I should change and, and, and things will be like unlock, you know? Like things would be so much better that I can immediately sense that um, great talent of the musician as a performer will come through this way. Or so that's this, something. Uh, this uh, online environment is good enough for. Uh, I have to say, I have to say that when pandemic started March last year, if we if you all remember, 
Uh, everybody was panicking as we all were, but I was getting lots of messages from my musicians who I, I have worked before everywhere, especially from America, because I, I worked with a lot of American musicians. Um, they all texted me <laughs> to say that, uh, that your time has come because I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years, 15 years, all the time, even though I prefer to experiment and work with a musician online than face to face. And I'll tell you a strange story that when I was in Tokyo one day and I was writing with a, writing for horn, French horn. I mean, French horn is not a traditional instrument, but I, I, I don't, I'm not a horn player. I don't know how exactly it works. And in fact, I don't like the sound of horn. So I wanted to make, I wanted to find the sound I like, which doesn't sound like a traditional horn, let's say. <laughs> which is very rude. But anyway, the musician was um, a great star musician who my thought process was, uh, for him, it was a very hilarious and funny. And he said, oh, don't worry about the rehearsed trials and all those people wrote plenty of, plenty of pieces for heroic horn, which I don't like the sound of. So let's, let's go and find a weird sound. So we were spending hours on, uh, online like this. But when I was in Tokyo, because I live in London, so I was in Tokyo for a week or so for other project. And uh, so therefore we were in the same town and I was, well, even then we, we decided to meet later that night, go for a drink because we are friends. But I asked him, can we meet online first? So we do the experiment on Skype at that time. There was no Zoom then, well, not that I knew. So Skype then we, uh, so I could record um, all the workshop I do on, a, on Skype with everybody in fact. And then after we found the composing part and work, work, let's say, even though I don't feel like a work. And then, okay, I'll see you in, uh, in 30 minutes because I'm getting out of this place and then I'll meet you. So that kind of thing. So I, I don't know, I've, I, um, I don't know if face-to-face -face is nice, but now this maybe it's okay because a smartphone you can record and so on, which I've done that before. But the online is, uh, for me, I think something special because it's so concentrated and and you are looking at me, I'm looking at you. It's, you know, it's very concentrated. So I, I quite like it and I can record everything. And uh, I'm a, I, I run my own record label to release my recordings because no one releases my recordings. So, but, so, so I'm just a recording nerd. I, I love recording. So yeah, so anything I could record everything like this. Um, even back then, back, back in, 10, 15 years ago, I, I've been doing this um, with a online. So that was, so that was great. So um, yeah, anyway, so since then, Shamisen, so the Hideju Shamisen play, um, he taught me, guided me, I think. He guided me really nicely, I think. I mean, because I didn't know anything about Shamisen. Of course, I, I really uh, experimented and researched um, the physicality, also tradition and what, these champion players have been learning to play that instrument for whatever the hundreds of years uh because why not take uh, advantage of that um but my how and then the next one how can i make it to my own composition because that's the that's my part of work um yeah so things like this so that was really fantastic uh experience for me um even though back then i mean we, we're going to talk about in Shakati in a minute but I didn't really even know back then that I understand the shamisen has sawari, sawari, which is the uh, oh, somebody's audio on. Abduction of Elizabeth Smart. Oh. Search for fourteen-year-old Elizabeth Smart has now gone. Sounds TV on. It's the news of the hour. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, we gone or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's just. Uh, yeah. Okay, I, I would maybe like to interject. Uh, there are oh, two, okay. two ways I see we, we could go. Okay. Uh, uh, so would you say like the, the, the tone color is for you when you're starting like at the early inspiring phase? Like the, you would be trying to find uh, guided by the tone color you would like to get from the instrument? Yeah, but so that's, so that's the thing. I'm sorry, I'm trying to explain a very um, indirect way that that I know that a lot of composers who works that way, 
uh, tell me the range, pitch range, tell me what you can do. Is it possible to do, is it impossible to do in your instruments? That sort of talk all the time. Um, but I, I, from, from the beginning, I never thought that way. I, I, because I, I think that I just love musicians, um, performers. And I always think of the, when I'm writing music, is that is a collaboration between the performers and composers. I always think of the music, basically, it's a three-way collaboration person who writes it, person who plays it, person who listens. And obviously the most, and the equally important people who um, organize it, because if you, want to if you want to play your, if you want to do performance outside of your living room, you need somebody else to organize it for you. I think that's the very important, so four way collaboration, let's say. So um, every time I meet somebody who wants to, who wants me to write a piece with the instruments I'm not familiar, I would ask for this kind of Zoom talk, and I will, we will talk for an hour or two. But often musician, they would say, I have no idea what that was, because, because I haven't spoken about, we haven't spoken about music or instrument for like an hour. But because I like to know about that person more than anything. But why did you, in fact, I mean, well, maybe we don't have time for this, but I'd be very interested to know why did you pick Shakuhachi, for example? I mean, well, it could be any instruments. Why did you do that? Even I will ask to the Japanese person. I mean, as I said, I'm a Japanese person who has never seen or heard or touched uh, Japanese instruments when I was growing up. So neither, I don't have any friends of mine who, who does that or who, who did that. So I would ask them, why did you decide to, to spend all your life to do, to pick, uh, to do that, you know? And in that kind of moment, whatever the answers of these instrumentalists, uh, that would be the inspir inspiration part for me. And then, so, the, so then therefore, if I may say so, the, it's not an instrument because I think that's sometimes I speak to my students and maybe those, those thoughts are quite Western, I don't know. It's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a product, you know, like an instrument is a violin, viola, cello. Cello is this, trumpet is that. And then this is what you can do, this is the, tone color of the instrument. Yeah, but who's playing that? I mean, because one person is playing completely different from the other. And then how does that person produce that instrument, which is obviously more of essence for shakuhachi than piano, let's say, if I may say so. Um, because yeah, I, mean, I know that pian my pianist friends will kill me, but I understand that pian pianists uh, would live with, uh, go with, everybody has a different tone color, that's true. But especially like a shakuhachi, as far as I understood, are the one note, but you can play all sort of way. Uh, like a symphony you can do with one, one note, uh, which is very diff very sp uh, unique thing, um, I understand, for all the Japanese instruments. Um, but anyway, but then again, I would very much like to discuss with a powerful person who plays that instrument, who's some strange reason want me to write a piece for. So hours and hours we do this first. And then every time I write, um, I just send a score, PDF or, or screenshot, whatever, then often musicians will play it into the smartphone and send it back to me in uh, 10 minutes or our time. And um, yeah, for, for example, that's same with everything. For example, right now, um, uh, I'm asked to write music for uh, Baroque instruments. I mean, I have no idea about Baroque instruments. Although I must say, I told them, oh, so, because they're all always worried, modern composer, modern time composer to write for a music from time of Bach. I said, look, I've written for Shakuhachi concerto and a piece of Shakuhachi. I mean, they are way older than Bach or, or anything like that. I mean, that's like a baby talk we're talking about, you know, things like this. So I, I felt pretty good telling them that. Anyway, so, so, so the, for example, Bach instruments, I have no idea. So I do this talk all the time. And surprisingly, their flute is way more limited than Shakuhachi, you know? Like one note you can play, you know, things like this. And, well, I, and I have a, I, on my wall, I have a chart of um, a Travolso flute, which is a Baroque instrument. Um, the note which is, which is flexible, which is not. And then the next, next to it, I have a chart which is given by Dozen Fujiwara, obviously the uh, big star of Shakuhachi player. And uh, he gave me the, his uh, chart, which, is, which doesn't say 
which he because he never says it's not possible because he will not. So he will talk about what are the more likely to be expressive and, and so on and so on, which is a beautiful things to really interpret. And then I write, but I don't want to, to I mean, I, I think it's important for composers not to unlock your imagination in because your imagination will be definitely poorer unless you are shakuhachi player, masterful shakuhachi player, if you're writing for shakuhachi, because you, you can't now especially if you have a big star like this. You so, have to, uh, yeah. would, you, would you say um, uh, that you also uh, share competence with the uh, instrumentalist after the piece is finished? Um, but what do you mean? After I finish the piece? Yes, I, I, you know, like, you know, how much uh, uh, if, if the piece comes out as a, you know, s a solid piece of work that uh, is, uh, expected to be played as written, or uh, how uh, because Japanese uh, soul uh, instrumentalists are very famous for, uh, or as we as we have learned, mm -hmm. for instance, mm -hmm. like trying to um, uh, feature some uh, uh, pieces by uh, contemporary composers or twentieth oh, okay. composers. Mm -hmm. We had a um, uh, uh, reference uh, recording that sometimes was completely different <laughs> what yeah. was written down. And, and it's still, it was published by the composer. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, so... Uh, but also, also but the Shakrachi, Shakrachi is a different style, no? Different style of playing. I mean, my style play like this and our, their play style plays like that. I mean, that's, I, I'm learning from them. I don't know, is it true? It, it, it is true, <laughs> it is true like that. But, uh, but sometimes it goes not only uh, um, changes in, in tempo, mm. but also in the, in the, in the tone material. Sure, yeah. But again, that's, the, but that's, the, that's another, but, but that's another thing, isn't it? I mean, maybe slightly different in your talk, but since pandemic, right? Since pandemic, I decided to study shamisen. Mm. to actually play. Mm. So he did, because he did just sent me Shamisen while I was writing concerto for him because he said just to, to get the inspiration or something. So I had it, I'd never played it. So then pandemic started, so I decided to learn, decided to, I mean, I, I decided to ask him if he could teach me. Of course he, he said yes, and then he's teaching me every week. So in fact, I'm practicing every day. And then this has been amazing experience for me because he's been teaching me traditional Shamisen music, obviously, and uh, and I, I don't know how you thought about this, but it was a shocking. It still is shocking to me, the tempo you just said, the tempo. And uh, uh, this is 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 strange. I mean, because I'm so <laughs> educated in a Western way, and it, it has uh, some strange uh, pauses, and it's got this vocal thing, and it gets faster, and it immediately go uh, slower, and but in a most natural way. It's not like um, not like the conductor doing a dramatic thing in a symphony orchestra. It's just so natural. It, but again, it gets slower and faster. And, and he will say, well, what, is it that strange? Because well, it is strange for me, but obviously that, it's a, that's a great way of learning. So get back to what you were saying that, is that for example, um, writing for Shakuhachi, for example, the Shakuhachi 5, um, the things like that. I, I have learned, especially during the pandemic, I must say, because of my experience, experience of a little bit learning as a beginner learning of that instrument shamisen, shamisen that i quickly realized that that is a specialty of japanese instruments mm -hmm. playing so why would i try to lock them in or to take take that treasure away from this because if i'm writing for uh, five flutes let's say that's probably okay because i mean I, get, I would imagine five Western instrumentalists, they're not going to start speeding up if there's no actual underwritten or, you know what I mean? I mean, I mean unless there's a, some, some, some other strange reason. But, but I am writing for Chakwati and this, this amazing, like a superstar, superman, sort of uh, super, super person, super woman, I don't know, super uh, instruments of, um, which is, um, I don't know what it is. It's just a, 
I, I don't know, it's just a very, it, it's, one can say flute, but is, is it flute? I mean, it, it's a massively powerful and, and torn colors itself has like hundreds of them. And um, yeah, super power uh, instrument. Um, but, and then I've, I was lucky, uh, um, thanks to, to you too, that I have five of them at the same time. So five of them say at the same time and the five of them shared such uh, traditional training and thoughts. So I, there's a definitely, I have to make them as best as I could, mm -hmm. not taking away. I mean, this is the treasure, you know, I need to keep that, keep that into my, my music. So um, for Sakurachi 5, that it was strange because during, it was during pandemic time. So I was asking them to record themselves playing together. It was very difficult for them to get together last year, if you remember, there's no vaccine before and stuff like this. But um, so they were wearing uh, face shields and um, playing shakuhachi. And uh, I remember uh, because, I remember because I mean, the impression of shakuhachi, people always like shaking their heads and neck, you know, stuff like this. And what if they shake heads like a, the sideways and vertically and sideways and vertically? And then I thought that would be, be peculiar and, and funny and strange. Then imagine that with the face shields. It's, it's hilarious. And I immediately knew that's the opening. It, we've got to do this. And the only, only thing they asked, please, uh, face shields uh, is not, uh, not um, please don't make it a uh, must. You know, you must do it. Facials, but it was very weird that it's moving facials as well as the chakra and their head. I thought that that was that was it. So um, so also in in fact you can in, uh, we could uh, see similarity when they would be wearing the tengai. Oh yeah 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 sure. <laughs> so they, they can do that. Moves with the playing, so yeah. actually uh, very traditional to yeah. have something on your head that is wiggling. Yeah, and, and also, also another thing I have to say that when I'm writing for Japanese traditional instruments, almost I have that rule, I don't know where from, but I do have a rule that I don't do any extended technique or experimental technique as one would do for clarinet or violin. Because that's another amazing thing I, th I found out, Japanese instruments, not just shakuhachi, but shamisen as well as others. I mean, all that, uh, and koto too. Uh, noise production and stuff there that's all be, all there for like thousands of years or, or yeah so it's a bit kind of that's a kind of um, strange that in avant-garde European composer was writing uh, making a noise and so on on violin or whatever or flute uh, as a modern technique but again I mean come on this shakuhachi guys been they've been doing for like thousand years right but that's um, and that, that's in tradition, it's nothing new, definitely nothing new, way before Bach, let's say. <laughs> so I thought that was very interesting. I mean, I just felt like there are, uh, there are enough treasure, sound of treasure there, and I don't need to invent one to add. So I really studied, I really wanted to study, so I really studied all that tradition uh, playing, which the Japanese tradition instruments have, so how can I combine them to um, make it my own music? So funny enough, for example, like a shamisen, I didn't know much, I mean, because I just studied it and then I closely uh, working with uh, Hidejiro and then I wrote a piece called Neo. And then years, years later, so seven, six years later, I surprised to myself, I started to study how to play shamisen. And Hidejiro often say, as you know, next technique, you probably know this piece, piece called Nail by Dai Fujikura. It's an opening, but it's like this, because, oh, wow, it's really hard. Goes, yeah, it's very hard. <laughs> so it's kind of um, interesting uh, for me anyway. It was, it, I'm sure it's uh, just making a, uh, the lesson fun for it, but uh, it's, a, it's a very, very interesting thing. And for example, like Shakuachi 5 too, I mean, also, oh, yeah, Shakuachi 5 is especially, especially interesting one for me because because I'm a composer so that means that I like writing everything on the paper because I'm we are such nature of people I think that's why we become composer we like to write everything we like to control everything 
I mean, I don't know, uh, most of us, let's say, I do. But then again, meeting shakuhachi players and meeting individual uh, other traditional instrumentalists, I just realized the more I write, specifically write all those things, um, where you do, you know, the shakuhachi technique in the full, a beat and half, and then change to another technique and that kind of things, I can just imagine that how that would be limiting the freedom of the performers because maybe every performers uh, and in different styles which i still quite don't really get that one performer does for example like a tara will be very differently from the other and okay that, that's so weird i mean you know it's <laughs> because the completely notes are different but anyway so that kind of thing going on and then i thought of that why am i gonna be the one who limiting them i should let them be the, the best you can be, but with my piece. That would be a great thing to, <laughs> that would make me look good. So therefore I have written, I, I, maybe you have seen the score. So it's, it's written, of course, it's every, all the notes are written and everything, but all the techniques are, perhaps you could do these things, please. <laughs> that, that's what I've been writing. So therefore the, uh, as I only know one uh, performance by the Shakurach Five, um, but I think they are doing, and uh, they ask me, what do I think of it? I mean, I said, look, um, I, if, you, if you do it too much, I will tell you, but I don't think it will happen. So just go what you think is best for you and for your instruments. And yeah, so that's my, but then that's that kind of um, thoughts are very new for me because I tend to write, uh, details unfortunately let's say um but again uh, in a western uh, music world i think that's on in a way that that's a, that's simpler for example i can't just come into symphony orchestra and say they don't i mean not to not to tell them what to do let's say you know um no, maybe could you uh, dig also one level deeper into sure. the idea uh, mm -hmm. behind uh, shakuhachi five and uh, yeah I have sort of sidetracked you when you started to t telling about the opening uh, mm. idea. Yeah. Uh, also, that was also based on the process, but uh, mm. if you could uh, just uh, go uh, a little bit more in depth uh, into uh, the, the, the the piece structure and uh, what yeah. Well, um, well, I mean, after I found out what the opening would be, but I mean, I, I just didn't know the opening would be would be that um, that big because I thought that would be just a, just an opening, you know, that, that shaking heads th things. But but then that what? But again, the the video they sent me was so interesting. But I have to say, I realized that the because of the um, the movement and physicality, what they have to do was. Um, was quite, I don't know if it's demanding or not, but it's, a, it's not, it was a way slower than I ex first initially expected. So, because I mean, I must have been stupidly thinking like a Western music sort of way, like a one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, that kind of this sort of strict sense. And I immediately I saw on, a, on the video, it was, oh, okay, I was wrong. I mean, that's, that's what happens. And of course, as you can imagine, they are super nice. So they are telling me that, please tell me what you want me to do, that kind of thing. But rather me telling my wish to them, why don't I just take a cue from them to say, okay, what about if that was slower, even slower? And then I asked them to do uh, twice as slower. And then they sent me that was, that was the, that was what became the piece. So I thought that was great. So if what if I because it's, I thought that was great so I just expanded it for like a, a minute and a half I think or something like this and different different chords and so on to expand and um, yeah I don't know it's a it's a I don't know, it's it's a um, simpler piece or is it not a simpler piece I don't know um, suddenly um, score wise is much simpler which is more difficult for me to write simpler score than complex one um, because I, that's just it's easier for me to write everything but stop myself from not to write and then um, 
I don't, I just don't really, hard to tell about structure because I, these days I don't really think so much uh, structures before I write. I think that comes especially uh, from that I always collaborate with a musician. So they play something and then I hear, I watch it, I hear it, and then I can see what, what I should do next. So, and then I write them and then I ask them to play, play again. And then and that's sort of how it grows. Uh, I mean, when I was younger, I mean, I had a notebook, you know, like a um, serious, European composer, I guess, that had a notebook sketched out every structures and everything, sections and everything. And then I, one day I sat, I sit and start writing to realize such plan. And they, it's, I'm sure it was okay and it was fine. It's still those pieces are played. But as I um, grow older or get older and working, um, working with this amazing musicians, who has so much to give to me, let's say, or, or, or how can I say that? I have to let them give it to me. So I should get a cue from them, the energy until the point that I stopped writing. So I, I just feel from their performance that I, what I should do next. So that's the way it's going. And then also you say that, uh, sorry, going back to your question that uh, it's strange for me that I, work with the musicians until quite close to the concert. So that's a, another funny thing is that because I, I always finish the work really early all the time. Um, yeah, I don't know why, but I do. Um, so I finish the piece, even collaborating with the musicians and musicians will say, oh, that's so great. Of course, uh, this part is no problem. I can just practice and I can do it, that kind of thing. And then often when I hear like a week or 10 days before the concert, I hear sort of, I get, I receive a recording or video to say that, well, it's, this is a bit, this, when I play entirely, I, I find it a bit tough here. Um, is there any way you can do that kind of thing? And then I'm very happy to, I'm always open. I mean, I'm always open because for me, it's the most important thing is the how musician would, would look good on stage. I mean, look, I don't mean just a visual, but I mean, if the musician is playing, executing the notes just because it's physically possible, I mean, that's poor in my opinion, because you need to be in front of those uh, strangers, audience, and you have to give not just a note, but you have to give your best note of best everything as a performer. And I just wanted to make sure that, that I can build the piece that you can do that. So I work until, until the performer feels very happy as I say, oh wow, this, I can definitely do that. So I feel great. And then that, that's always the time that I, I sort of finish the piece. So unless there's some pieces I, I revise afterwards and so on, sometimes I do. Um, uh, apart from that, it's a often finished piece is the kind of piece that a performer often say, this is, this is it, you know. But then always, always, also another thing is that uh, I, something I love is that uh, I write some, uh, so I, it's funny. Uh, in fact, yesterday, I, I thought I finished the piece for show. A show is another thing, isn't it? It's such a limit, in a way, limited, <laughs> limited instrument. But again, how can I not to take that as a limit? Is, a, is that's the, one of the most unique instrument in the world? And uh, how can I, keep that uniqueness within my own music. So I was working with this uh, young show player who asked me to write a piece. I think I finished the piece, right. And then I sent it to him. Three weeks later, he said he's practicing every day. It's very interesting for me because the piece is quite slow, but it's, he, for him, it's still fast, okay? So we have, and then we met on Zoom because he said, oh, can we just meet in the Zoom? So sure. So we met Zoom, in the Zoom, and then, uh, but reminding you that quite often I've noticed that this Japanese instrumentalists, they're often in Japanese language, they're very polite. So I have to really pull, pull out the words that they really want to say, especially when they are hinting if I could reconsider some change <laughs> because they should say, but they're so polite. And, and, and so, 
So okay, I can just say, that, oh, you're saying that it's a little bit awkward to play. They wouldn't say yes, but I can say that. Okay, let's let's try. And then we on Zoom, uh, so real time composing basically. I, 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 what about this? What about this? Zoom is great actually. We could do with a screen share. So really real time composing. And he immediately played um, in front of me. And in the ending, he said, "What did he say?" I think he wanted to say, "I wanted to finish with the highest note." But I think he meant as in that little sort of effect I wanted to try on only that note at the end. I think he wanted to say was that it's a not so effective because his pitch is too high. But instead of saying that, he said he's worried. <laughs> he said he's worried about all all the audience. They may not be able to hear that high pitch. That's not true, of course. I mean, <laughs> but that's the how he asked me to co reconsider. I remember. I said, okay, okay. And then um, we tried on Zoom. And then I immediately, we drastically changed the end. And there's a moment, even on Zoom, we can tell this is it. So that's, that's the ending. And that's what we all agree. That's what it's meant to be. So that's. With, yeah, so then I would imagine that for, for now, I think that's a finished piece. And then, uh, but there's still a month or two to go to the concert. So um, he's, uh, of course, he's welcome to, to, to tell me anytime. What's the, yeah, so I don't know. I, I don't know, I, that's uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, I really respect the musicians who, I mean, look, look I mean, even Shamisen, right? That, I can I can play perfectly just before before my lesson, but in the lesson I can't play. Does it happen to you? I don't know. It's in front of my teacher, I don't know. I, I just miss mess something. You know how does that work? Even though my even my teacher is so nice, you know. And then I, I just have great respect for people who are not so. I have performed before uh, playing the piano and so on um, when I was younger. Um, that this incredible nervous situation on stage with the spotlights and everything and audience there how, how many audiences it doesn't matter three people to one thousand they are there watching you i mean it's it's amazing that the performers can just live there and just not to just play what it is but to perform and i just don't want to be the one interrupting that disturbing that but i'm hoping that my working with me, I hope the musician would feel that it's expanded also the experience, I mean, with me. Meaning that I just think the composing process is a collaboration, but both of us together, because it's, a, it's, not, it's not like a, you order a piece and then piece comes and then here it is. It's not like a putting in an oven and then you open when it's ready. It's very much of a, like a walking together. And also sometimes that I write a piece and then, um, because I, I'm also, I have no patience. That's also another thing. I, I'm the weirdest composer who likes to cut my own composition because usually a composer doesn't want to cut. But I always like, I always cut, you know. Um, and then uh, sometimes musicians tell me, uh, tell me that, hey, I mean, I, I, what happened to that section? And well, I didn't want to say that I didn't like the sound, but I just didn't think it was working. And then uh, sometimes a musician, um, she would say like, oh, look, look, just, just give, me, give me two days. I will convince you. And then she will perform and they send it to me. Oh, wow, that's great. Because obviously, they are, I, mean, I mean, they are sight reading, you know. But so I shouldn't really judge. Oh, okay, that, that's, that doesn't sound so good. Let's cut, you know. So sometimes it's like that. And then uh, this, the loss section is now back in and that would change the structure drastically and so on. But also, um, finally, speaking of the structure, that that's a um, great uh, example, <laughs> strangest example that I can tell you, and how much ignorant that I am, especially Japanese traditional instruments, is that I was writing music for koto, and that was a 25 string koto. I've written music for 13 string before, but 25, do you need 25 string for that? I mean, because koto is a, also another great instrument that are, you have 13 string koto, but it's not harp. It's not 13 notes only, but there's a hundreds of tone colors you can add. You don't need the pedals. I'm talking about like, like harp. You don't need a pedal, anything. And then the bridge moves as uh, if you want to, that kind of thing. So that's great. So I was writing for this 25 string koto, and I was 
really asking her why 25 string? I mean, why do you need that much? And that kind of thing. So I started writing this. So I was writing. Then everyday sharing, she was, she was uh, video, videoing herself and sent it back to me. And, and that was really um, great inspiration to write more. And then halfway through the piece, she said, oh, sorry, I, I'm a singer too. Can I sing? And, and I didn't realize after the tradition of court play, they often sing too. But in a strip with my mentality, like, my, because I mean, if, I, if you're asked to write for violin, it will be a problem if I write a vocal part as well. <laughs> you know, unless the, the, the violinist who actually wants to sing. I mean, it's, that's very strange. So, but song, I mean, because I have my plan how I want to finish the piece because it's halfway through the piece. So I knew how it's gonna end in a way, but then she said, "Can I can I sing too?" Because I'm singing because I, I like to I like to sing. I said, "Well, you never told me that." Because oh, well, I was nearly I was even writing email saying that oh maybe the next piece we can do you know because I want to have my way to finish. But then again, I just before I send I deleted, and I said, "Why not? Why not?" What do, you, what do you want to do? So let's meet. So we met in Zoom again. It was during pandemic time last year. So then, um, yeah. So quickly, I changed my idea to the okay, second half, because I liked the first half. She liked the half, first half. So, okay, let's make the second half. All of a sudden, it's going to be a song. <laughs> so, and also, I didn't want it to do uh, like a movement, because I don't really like movements. Movements like an excuse. You know, I, I, it's not. It's not fair. Okay, it's, it's great composers, um, Dvorak to, you know, Beethoven and all those people who wrote the symphonies with the uh, movements. Okay, but I didn't want it to go. Okay, she wants a song. Second movement, a song. I, I didn't want to do that. So how can I do one piece, but second half, all of a sudden it's a song, and then yeah, I'm so glad I did that. I don't even now remember my original idea. Probably not very good. <laughs> So it was thankful she, all of a sudden, she told me. But having said all those things, it, it was very hard for me to accept outside ideas, outside um, factors like this when I was younger. Because I mean, I hope when you meet young composers, I hope you'll be nice to young composers because being young and composer is very difficult. Uh, mentally very difficult. I don't know. I, it was like that for me because it's, I want to, it was my piece. I want to make everything and, and then people would maybe in a good intention, they would, they will say their ideas, but it's like, it's a bit like somebody giving you a parent, parental, a parental uh, help, uh, advice when you're not asking. I mean, that's like, I'm sure it's universal. You should never do, you know? But it's very annoying, let's say. It, when you, but it was very annoying when I was younger. But then now I really understood after working with so many great musicians, I mean, not just one or two, but all sorts of instrumentalists. And I can understand why this person is standing in front of people, um, you know, standing in front of people of a thousand people, or because those musicians would have power to perform this, whatever the music, and then, yeah, so, so I don't know, I, I'm very always open now, <laughs> more than before, to welcome such ideas, and, and, and always try to talk with the musicians, and uh, who would perform the piece, who are, so we are, yeah, we are, we are together, it's, um, if you know, in the Japanese uh, sports, sports, you know, we've got, uh, in a sports day, we have this kind of uh, two people running, and then uh, two, we, tie each other left, right leg to right, left leg. And then you, how to, how to run two, two, two people together. There's such, um, also, uh, I like would, would like to ask you if this process uh, uh, continues mm -hmm. uh, with uh, renditions of the, of the piece that by also uh, other musicians who want to take mm. it up. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, so, but that's, that's, a, that's the thing. That's also a lot of people ask me this. Um, I think there's a two stages that you, that question is fantastic it's with two stages. The one is that the piece, why it was born. 
piece was born for a reason. So either it's a performers who I, I wrote for or we work together, and then this piece has, was born. And then after that, and completely other musicians have looked at it or seen them perform. And quite often what happens is that those musicians, they look at it and then, wow, the premier guys, they perform it really, really beautifully or fantastically. And therefore we will do completely different. That's fantastic. Because I mean, the piece should have, piece should have a, piece should have a um, space for the, another interpretation because otherwise why does it have to be performed again? So that's the, as much as I'm a recording nerd, so this is a big contradiction of myself, that as much as I love recordings and, and, and everything completely, I love it. But that, um, that the importance is that a piece of music, is, it will be interpreted by completely different, by different musicians. And every time, because you perform differently today from tomorrow. I mean, that's the beauty of it, isn't it? I mean, it should not be the same. I think that's uh, one of the reasons some of the, oh, I shouldn't really say, but some of the, let's say, um, contemporary music, I mean, it's, maybe sometimes it's the same. This piece is the same and that piece is the same, but, but that's the beauty of uh, uh, even Western classical music too. I mean, it's Dvorak played by uh, uh, Czech Phil is different from the Berlin Philharmonic and, and Japanese orchestra and different conducts is different. It's a, it's, in that part is a similar, and maybe there are even more difference in the Japanese instrumentalists because you have different school, uh, we will do this way. And then they will say, well, I will do this way, that kind of thing. And then uh, I can imagine that uh, the, the piece allows you and it will be good for any style of performance or any ways, let's say. So, I don't know. It's but, uh, so did it actually happen that you were uh, uh, contacted by uh, uh, instrumentalist or uh, mm -hmm. other, other performer, uh, you know, I would like to perform your piece that has already been premiered, already around, like, uh, yeah. could, you, could, could you give me notes or, or, or? Yeah, oh, I see, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that happens, that happens a lot. Um, that happens a lot, uh, I, I must say, that happens a lot. Um, how can I put this? Okay, good example is, I, I wrote my first ever shakuhachi piece called Koro Koro. I mean, I don't need to explain to you guys that uh, what the Koro Koro is. I mean, that, that was fascinating for me that, that I mean, how can the tech, name of the technique could call Koro Koro? That's, that's crazy. I thought that was amazing. And then anyway, um, so I worked with, with Dozen for that piece. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing that Dozen is a big star, even on Skype in his, uh, in his house, probably midnight in Japan. Even then I could see some kind of star aura <laughs> around, around his, 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 his image. I mean, he's a fantastic uh, performer and a fantastic person. And anyway, um, it was great uh, working with him. So he performed it. And then um, Reison Kuroda, who's another, completely, completely different, another shakuhachi player wanted to play that piece. And then he told me, personality, I would just yeah, completely different, yeah. completely opposite. And then he told me, he told me that, um, yeah, he told me that uh, it's no one can, I, I can never play like a dozen. And therefore I wanted to do completely different. I said, well, you're welcome, please do. And I, I mean, they're both recordings out there. And uh, I think that, that the lengths are drastically different and then the uh, pace and I think the Rayson one is so much more, um, I guess, it, um, I guess it, uh, quite in a good way, very aggressive um, um, groove, um, uh, not groove, but aggressive drive that piece has. Those on one is, uh, in my opinion, it's a very noble, very beautiful. It's wow, that's, that's how, <laughs> how this piece will be. Uh, but again, race one is also uh, exciting. And I just can't believe that from the ego as a composer, I just can't believe that I, one, the one score I have produced could have two amazing perform performances. I mean, that's, that's great, you know? And but that also another thing is you say that people ask me, yes, that's, I think more and more I am careful 
the, when I was younger, it's okay. People don't ask. People don't ask, and even people, even, even if I give a opinion, even though it's my music, they will not listen because you know, it's a young composer, who cares? It, you know, no, like this. But as I get older, I've noticed that if I say anything, then they might, they might listen. That's the problem. They should ignore, but they might listen. That's the problem. So therefore, the, the, sometimes when I get asked, not just Shakuhachi music, but any music, so Dai, what do you think? I'm very careful, as in I try not to say things because they might do what I say, right? But again, that are sometimes when I'm working with a wonderful artist, that are maybe my idea, well, I mean, uh, unless I'm like a master, master shakuhachi player, then I maybe I can teach you how, how, how it should be, but obviously I'm not, and definitely I have less knowledge uh, about the Chakrachi culture, Chakrachi tradition, Chakrachi playing, than the perfor whoever performing my piece. So maybe I shouldn't, I'll just, maybe it's better if I don't say too much, because they, what they're going to, it's a bit like, uh, it's like, a, it's a bit like, um, it's like a bet, you know? So how, how do you know that my, do you say I don't do I don't do gambling, so I don't know. But it's like, how do you know my hand is a hand? My card is a better card than yours. Let me see your card first. <laughs> so maybe what I mean is that maybe the performers and probably most likely performers' idea to for my piece probably better than how I think it should be with my poorer knowledge. So unless it's a, unless there's some completely no way kind of direction then I would probably say but um, I try not to say these days I mean, it's quite good but also sometimes it's a different thing isn't it when performer asks me what do you think about this part and only that part well I don't know that's that's strange why do you have a gap there why do you do this but some most of the time when I hear the entire performance by that person, I think, oh, wow, I understood, I understood, I understand now. So that's the storytelling as well as that, that their interpretation, because a great performance, they have reason why they do it, they're doing that. So that's also another thing that I have learned before I, before I answer my, before I say my silly answer, it, it, let's be patient and let's see what, <laughs> what the performer would give us the whole picture. Most of the time is very convincing, I mean, to me, even though I never thought of that. Um, yeah, so that's the, I don't know, that, that, that kind of thing is a very, uh, it's, it's, for me, it's the very es essence of, of making music. And that is, a, if I may say, it's a very different from, I imagine writing novels or painting, because I have painter friends and also they, they just, you know, in a studio, they paint and, and it's done then that's that's the work and novelists the same uh, who they they write um and then well maybe what collaborating with the editor and so on but pretty much they just write themselves but and also they can people can, uh, the creator can read or look at the, their work without anyone's help but composer i mean all i did was uh, write something on a paper so I have this, I know it's very cynical of me, but I can't help it, it's my personality. But I have this image that, you know, you have a sheet, a clean sheet of paper. That has a value of the, that's a value of the paper, right? So if I write a note, then that's a, that would be a dirt. So it will have a less value as a, as a, as a paper, you know? And until the performer plays it, then it has another. So in other words, that I definitely need a performer. And without it, I'm going nowhere. So okay, uh, I think uh, it is really, really interesting, and I I can feel uh, uh, your sort of insight into it. And I would like to open the discussion sure. uh, to other people. Although I have solicited you to uh, to to join us even earlier, but please. Uh, do you have uh, any comments or or uh, questions to to die? Hmm, there's a question. Oh, there's a text.
is this for all of us or yes just please. yes it's it's the it's uh, for anybody who is uh, enjoying within our uh, zoom meeting oh, okay um yeah if that's okay i i yeah wanted to just yeah share my comments uh because i was so glad for um for so many of the things that were mentioned today uh let me see. There we go. Um, yeah, I was so happy that you mentioned uh, the Koto player um, and that she sort of volunteered singing uh, because that's what the topic of my paper earlier today was about how the Koto, you know, during the Edo period, hmm. essentially all music for the Koto had a vocal melody. Like to, for someone to be a Koto player, not a singer would be kind of like an absurd concept to people back hmm. then. Um, and how the certain styles of Koto that mm -hmm. um, emphasize singing more so than the instrumental performance have sort mm -hmm. of declined nowadays because mm -hmm. the, the Eurocentric education system places mm -hmm. such a high value on instrumental performance. So I just wanted to say I was so grateful for that oh. because um, I did my master's degree as a composer in Japan. Oh, really? And even though I, I, <laughs> yeah, even Amazing. though I specifically got a scholarship to go there and write music for Japanese instruments, I, uh -huh. and I was studying and playing koto the whole time I finished oh. and I, <laughs> I never wrote a piece for the koto that had a vocal melody. And then oh, so okay. part, of, part of my paper today was sort of reflecting on like the strangeness of that experience and thinking like, oh. you know, the koto really, the 13, and, and that's, you know, so many of your comments really resonated me, like with me, like, you know, the 25 or 30 string koto, you only start to need to have that if you expect the koto to be like a piano. Yeah. But if, but, you, uh, if yeah. you listen, yeah. Mm. And I, I didn't want to do that either. So that's, yeah. so that's, that's another thing, isn't it? Uh, isn't it? Like some people, some composers would uh, say, I mean, treat uh, those instruments like a closer instruments of the Western instruments. I mean, then why, why would you bother to write for Japanese instruments, for example? So yes, that, that, I, I hope, uh, yeah, because the koto is also the instruments I'm, I'm, how can I say, learning to understand so but again that uh for example i think that in uh, in two weeks time i think i will have a, a cd of all of my koto pieces or something like this so so that's a great <laughs> from the person who doesn't know anything about japanese instruments it's a it's a little a little good step for me and uh yeah uh, so so is it if i may can i ask a question because i want to learn because oh, obviously, yeah, you, obviously yeah. you know you, you know way you know definitely way better than me um and that's not difficult um because i don't know anything so um is it is it is that why the lot of my koto player friends um they also study and also play a little bit of shamisen but then they will not play shamisen as in like a shamisen virtuoso but because of their singing is it that's why? Yeah. I mean, that, that you yeah. say that uh, it traditionally the play is always sung and then that's the sort of accompany part. Is it, is it that's yeah. why, do you think? Mm. Yes, yeah, it, it sort of has to do with, I think a lot of um, people in Japan nowadays sort of think of the koto as like an analog to the harp or the piano, but it was really a melodic instrument. And mm. the musical interest in that Edo period music comes from the multi-melodic, heterophonic, mm. whatever you mm. want to call it, texture. So mm. so that's why you would have the shamisen or um, the bow de kokyu, you know. Mm. So that's why I loved your comment too about when you wrote the piece for the, the viola, the plucked <laughs> viola, and how the, the sound of the plucked viola and the the koto went so well together yeah, and it, sure. it exact it was exactly you know that's the shamisen got really popular in the beginning of the edo period and mm. and shamisen just by itself as a single melody is a little mm. maybe not that exciting and they inherited the the tradition of the the biwa hoshi who sang yeah, and sure, played yeah, sure. so, but can, so, so, can you imagine, so can you imagine that but 15 years ago silly even sillier younger and, and sillier me writing viola doing this or, or with a with a some viola player plays like this like a like a banjo let's say i mean, can't imagine like with a tiny little guitar because trim, like this like sforzando like trim, like this and now i just received a recording from rehearsal recording of uh uh koto player leo and uh shamisen player hideji playing with a with a proper shamisen going like this wow <laughs> that, that's what it meant to be but I just, I didn't know. I didn't know 15 years ago. So, 
Yeah, so that's a, that's a very, I don't know, it's a, it's very, I, I, I think sometimes I don't know how, how, if this symposium is longer, I would like to ask you what, why you decided to do that, because that's, that's more of a bigger journey, sound to me, than, I don't know, than me. But, but again, that I, I often wondered that if I, am I looking at this Japanese culture like non-Japanese person or, because I mean, it's a it's a strange thing. I mean, and also um, I'm now curating. I'm a artist director of the music festival in Tokyo called Bon Creative Festival. And for some reason, I didn't. I didn't. This is our. This year is our fifth year. Um, but I didn't plan it. But from the beginning, because all my friends are musicians, I told you this before in this forum. That for, from the beginning, I we had a Japanese traditional instrumentalists taking part as well. And then now, fifth year, I have to say, the, these guys, meaning the traditional guys, they took over. That, I don't know how many Koto players are appearing this year even, uh, because it's all st strange things, maybe you know this. Uh, you ask a one master Koto player, <laughs> and she brings her, her students or all those people, so that it comes like a, with, a, with a forest of a Koto player, which is great for us, but uh, that would never happen if you hire, um, I don't know, cellist, that cellist will come. I mean, she, she or he will not bring to, uh, 10 hour players, you know? So, um, so that's a very interesting uh, phenomenon for, for me. Um, yeah, so thank you for your comments. And, and thank you as well. And yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing the, the more recordings of Koto music. I, I have, you know, really enjoyed the ones I've heard so far. Oh, thank you. Uh, the performances by Leo San, so. Ah, I see, yeah. I see. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that, that's, also, that's also the, the, I was told that the, it's just a combination of a traditional Koto playing, uh, especially at the beginning. And then a, and then a dozen who, is, who knows who knows everything about this, this Japanese history, after me anyway, that he, with, with his smile, he will say that, but you do know that, that those are often used only as a decorative way, not in a fanatic, your 16th note, uh, one after the other combinations. <laughs> I just want you to know that's what he said. And, I'm, and I know he's right. <laughs> anyway, it's an all a fascinating new world for me, even though it's a, even older world than the world I knew of music world. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Are there other uh, com comments, questions? Yeah, I'll just jump in. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hey, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, keynote speech. Uh, I really loved your comment about um, when making music is a four-way collaboration mm, yeah. Yeah, sure. you know, yeah. between the performer, listener, and also the production team. Yeah. And um, yeah, and and I was wondering, mm -hmm. is that in your experience, is that a common view or do you feel that maybe other composers or other musicians don't see it as a four-way collaboration but yeah it's a, a, it, from from my experience by talking to composers or uh, especially funny in my experience talking to younger composers mm. it's the strangest thing that are that uh, I'm, I think I'm quite, I would like to think quite okay with a communication t using technology. Uh, but I mean, obviously younger com uh, composers like students, I mean, I only teach sometimes, but some of my students, I mean, in their twenties, of course, they, they multi-platform multi chats and so on, we all do. So they are in touch, they are ca technologically capable to in touch with people. Uh, mm. let's say way more than my parents in their seventies, of course, but, but I have noticed that they have not uh, communicated enough with musicians. They will mm. say that, uh, oh, that, that's looking at the score and that doesn't matter, shakuhachi or writing for trumpet, whatever. 
the, looking at the score, that's great. Oh, I just wondered out of blue. Oh, that can is look at, looking at this part. How how is that? How does that sound? Is it does it sound good? Because I I don't know. I mean, I don't know how how does that sound? And then the students often say, oh, that that's okay. It would work. Blah blah blah. I mean, I'm sure it works. But then have you have you tried with your musician? Because no no. Um, I I searched on a, on the YouTube, and then the guy in Texas can do it. Because yeah, the guy in Texas can do it. I mean, if you look at like two bars, but can your performer perform the way you want to do if you play the five minutes before to that section? How's that? Because uh, like this, so yeah, but then, but then you are technologi technologically capable to communicate with anyone now. Well, I mean, why don't you use that? Just just say hello to the mm. performer. I mean, yeah, but then the rehearsal is, uh, we have a rehearsal two days before the concert. Yeah, but that's two days before the concert. You need to really find out now, and, unless the performer say otherwise, that's that's another issue, but you haven't tried. I mean, that's, that's a big problem. Mm -hmm. So I think that distance, I mean, I mean, I don't know, it's, it must be come from this kind of, uh, and I don't say that, as a, I, absolutely, I don't say that as a criticism, but it's, it comes with this kind of, maybe it's my, this is just my view, uh, sort of image of like European componist sort of <laughs> thing, like a Mala went to, I don't know, a Mala went to the hut in the, by the lake or something, right? And it's, mm -hmm. spent a month, wrote a symphony, and, and here is a symphony, you know? <laughs> that's, that's wonderful, great, that's really nice. But, and also, having said that, he was a conductor, so he, he was a performer. So, and then I don't, I mean, what would he have done if he was writing for Koto Concerto? I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. So, um, but he didn't. So, yeah. So, um, I, I'm just surprised at how composer has always been, and I, yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't know whether I can generalize this, but I, in my experience, I see that tradition a lot from European composer from Europe. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of my Italian students and so on, they've been told, there are, you know, being composed is a good thing. It, it is, and it's all that great. But at the same time, you know, you're not alone making the masterpiece, if you think that's the masterpiece. I mean, that's another question. The work, whatever, you might want to, to take it. But that's, in, um, fortunately and unfortunately, we can't do on our own because, as I said, the pa composed just paper with a dot. I mean, that's like, as I said, I, pessimistically, that's like a less value of the paper because you just put a dot on it until the performer play it. So that means nothing until there's a sound. I mean, because we need to, music is all about sound. So how does it sound? But, but it should be possible. But how does that sound without your performer? I mean, how would, would he play? I mean, even I would say, is this, is because your piece, let's say seven minutes piece. So it can't be seven minutes only concert. So that means, that performer would play other pieces. And yeah. then the stamina wise and everything, how, how does that work for, for her, for him? I mean, how, how, you know, is it after the interval? Is it, you know, of course you can predict all, everything, but uh, you, you know, one has to think because there's a musician who has to play hour and a half music, right? Um, how does that sit <laughs> your piece in that whole, recital uh, and the concert. So I don't know, um, and also organizing parts, I, I think quite often composers, me included when I was younger, forgets. Um, but it's a great thing, I have to say, I tell, I advise every single composer, you should do, you should create concerts, produce concerts for uh, your experience. And then you'll think twice if you want to have very large gong or something like that. And that would cost you 250 pounds a night for, for you know, you want to hit, you want to have that in general rehearsal? Well, I don't know, it's, um, it's cost is mounting up. Maybe you, you can do with another solution, you know? I mean, of course you can't just think practically and then uh, uh, damage your artistic uh, side to it. But then also at the same time, the limit can really inspire because you have to find a way, isn't it? And then, so that's, okay. I mean, do you really need that? that? That's a big question because I don't know how you think of this, but as a composer, because you are, you have 
you are fighting, not fighting, but you have this ego thinking, of course I need this because it's my piece, I need this so much, this is so important. Yeah, but do you really, and just reminding you, that's, mm -hmm. that's um, you know, all that costs, you're going to go over 2,000 pounds for this rental only, you know, only for the percussion, by the way. So you have to you think, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I, oh, quite often I say that to the student because, you know, student comes with, in a good intention. So no, this is the way I want to do. I told you the philosophy of this piece and all that stuff. This is great. It's important. Mm -hmm. and that's, I said, that's so fantastic. That's great. I respect that. Just reminding you, all that together, um, I can estimate that's about 2,500 pounds in total of rental we're talking. Mm -hmm. And then uh, conductor is doing four, four all the way through. But you do know that conductor often gets like 20, 30 times more fee than mm -hmm. the second clarinetist. So just putting out there. And sometimes I say the figure of the conductor because I know of a friend who's figure. And then often students say, really? Would be, do you get, he or she gets paid that much for one concert? Yeah. Only the clarinet gets that much only. So you want the conductor to do this four, four, and then all the crazy notation you ask to do for second clarinet. It's, it's just, I'll put it out there. <laughs> Often the students will, after all that big talk about philosophy and say, this, oh, okay, I'll, I'll think about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's a quite, you know, but that, that's, I don't see that as um, some of my painter friend who also compose, composes, he often say, says that he often had to fight with that he can't have a control over the final products as a composer, where he, as a painter, he can. And mm -hmm. I just so can, and, and I, I can realize my painting as I want to. And it's so frustrating compo as a composer, and I go to rehearsal with good, good intention. Maybe you, you have this experience too. You know, some person in the ensemble I don't know what happened there, making fun of you, all that stuff. It's just distracting stuff that could happen. And then you have only two hour rehearsal with a break, ever so long break, mm -hmm. all that stuff. But again, that, uh, I mean, I often speak to him about this discussion that, uh, but I think the key is how can I, how can we make it to that advantage? It is mm -hmm. not painting, it's not, something you can paint from the one corner to the other corner perfectly because humans are not perfect and then performers are not perfect and we are not definitely not perfect so that all that imperfection can bring the chemistry you know and it happens only that time i mean isn't that amazing especially after the especially i don't know um experiencing sorry a bit out of shakuhachi but uh, experiencing pandemic time because i mean but what I think what we miss the most is the, is is a concert. You go to a concert with your friends and so on, and you hear uh, watch a show, the same concert, same thing you have heard. Uh, just difference is that you're sitting next to your friend, and then your good friends uh, you share this taste and everything. But you, for some reason, you can't believe that you absolutely love that piece, and your friend absolutely hated it. And in the next piece, you absolutely hated it. And your friend liked it, loved it so much. And you just can't believe that uh, your friend has a, such a terrible taste. And so, so does she about you. Um, but again, that, that because you're friends, you, you still love each other. And then, and then, but you can go back, go on the way home. You can discuss. And, but then that's a beautiful thing that you shared. And it's okay for you to, to have a completely opposite um, experience. And then no one, I don't think, no one would think... Um, that kind of sharing experience that uh, one would think, well, I won't have a money back because I only like the two pieces out of four. I mean, that's pretty good, you know? So, but, uh, that, but that, that sharing part, which is not the same as, uh, again, I say as a recording nerd that you go and listen to perfect recording in your time on Spotify or whatever, even the YouTube, um, yeah, so-called live concert, but it was a, broadcasts a day later so, so that means it's edited which is fine which is fine because it's uh, we only hear it in our in our environment um whatever the speakers you have so i think that that live part that, that you share that like you have a different opinion i think that's a beautiful thing and I'm, I'm sure you can do that of course you can do it with the art gallery show you go to the art gallery and looking looking at the same painting but at the same time but the painting is not going to change but performance does I mean, matinee concert and evening concert, I mean, how different would that be?
it is different because it's it's always different. So I think that part. I think um, back to your question. Um, I really do believe it's a. We have to be constantly remind ourselves that are uh, not that. I'm not saying that like uh, oh everybody's important that kind of thing that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's not that. But it's 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 an essential because otherwise we won't hear the note, isn't it? If you want to hear that note, we need that at least of four elements, mm -hmm. and then and then we hear it, and then what do we what are we going to do? That's the starting point of the of the music. So yeah, I mean I, I don't know. That's my my thoughts and belief. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, that's brilliant, and it's great to hear that you impart that practical knowledge to your students mm -hmm. as well. So that you you know <laughs> it's really necessary and I think that's the best advice yeah create your own events or your own concerts because not only are you yeah getting a, a practical knowledge but you you're forging those links with the performers and you're you're building that mutual respect and then mm. surely that will lead to a better collaboration and a better yeah performance I mean, and pieces I, mean, I, I, I guess that I had a I mean quite I say quite short quickly um I had a good teacher that all my teachers were conductors good uh, great conductors as well as a composer i remember the time when i was younger i wrote an orchestra work and it was it was fine and and then uh, my mentor pet etchvish was conducting and then he so i'm rehearsing we're rehearsing like oh that part is not together can we just do this normal thing it's fine all fine and he was great and he's a great mentor and he one point he just he just Come on, come over. And he just whispered to my ear so no one can hear, hear it. And what I have just asked, and he said, but that's your problem. Because my writing, it could, it could have been, without changing anything, it could have been, bar line could be uh, semi, semi, semi quiver late or after, I can't remember now. Then it would have been sight readable. Said, there would be no problem to stop. But because of my notation is that, and then he jokingly said that, so, you, so we spend two, three minutes now are you going to pay for that? Where's your wallet? And it's a joke, of course. But I'm saying three minutes together, you know, okay. So my, he, he wouldn't say his part, but a, like a rental part of the, the whole performance. So, you know, that is, of course, it's a joke. But I, it me quickly quite it reminded me that, uh, oh, okay, so that is my, I mean, it's not an error. I mean, of course, two minutes later, it was fine. But then that's the two minutes we don't need to spend. So I think that kind of way of teaching, which he taught me, was a great way to really realize. And then be before uh, my ego would go and say, oh, but this is my philosophy of the piece to put it bar line that way. Because it's quite easy when it comes to numbers. Oh, okay, that's, that sounds not a very good deal. <laughs> so I should change, I should remember that. <laughs> you know, I think that was quite good to, sometimes I, tell, I teach my students this way um that's because it's a universal feeling isn't it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's i don't know <laughs> thanks thank you no thank you very much you. so um i think um maybe this symposium finds its end today and uh, just about now and uh, i would like to thank uh, everybody all the and especially uh, to you, Dai and uh, Francesca, for, for uh, sharing, uh, sharing and sharing your, uh, your ideas. And I think it is uh, such a great impulse to see uh, people who all over the world who, who share this experience in this interest and this um, love for uh, special toys that have fantastic history and fantastic uh, uh, images and that completely uh, enrich our lives and change our lives. Uh, that uh, we can meet uh, at least online um, and that uh, we, can, we can share this passion and that we can take this uh, symposium as a sort of an impulse to wherever uh, we may go further.